Uh, now we are recording. I always ask the first, the same thing first, which is, how many of my typing sessions have you watched before? All right. So, um, man, uh, I found you three weeks ago, and I've probably listened to several hours, maybe uh, four or five typing sessions. But I'm kind of like gaming on the side, listening to you. Mm -hmm. I knew I was gonna get a. Uh, I, I knew I was gonna take the fifty dollar deal. So. I was like intentionally not trying to take in the TI questions and the SI questions. I know I'm gonna suck at that anyway. So um, <clears throat> yeah, four or five. Uh, okay, cool. So, uh, well, let's start with the, with the SI kind of questions. Can you, can you relate to me your afternoon and evening yesterday? A series of uh, inconsequential details. Well, I got done with work about 6 p.m. and uh, my father came home. I live with him. I live with the family here, him and my mom. And uh, I guess we caught up on my day. He asked me what I ate for lunch. I couldn't remember. Um, <laughs> this is the same thing every day. I cannot remember. Okay. Really. All right, cool. Uh, we do the same thing. Down, <clears throat> chat, watch TV. Okay, so when you get up in the morning, do you have a clear? Uh, do you do you go? Do you say things to yourself first thing in the morning, like, okay, what do I have upcoming today? First, I've got to go to Meow, Then I've got to go to Meow, Then I've got to go to Meow. Yeah. Uh, so I do like. I do marketing. I work from home. And it's like, I, I feel like I can have like a, a big picture idea. Like I know I got to create these ads. I got to get these emails out to certain people, but it's actually more of like this stressful feeling that like prompts me. And what I'm doing is taking notes in like apps to try to like SI some of that stuff, because if not, I will just, I'll just have this stressed out feeling and I'll forget something. So I think, I think the answer to your question is it's a general feeling of stress. And then I go to my note taking apps and then I can actually see what I wrote yesterday that I have to do today. Okay. Do either of your parents tell SI stories? Say yes, my mom. Yeah. In fact, she gets in like a, that's like her, she, she like enters like a flow state and she's just talking about when I was a kid, we go to the ranch and all this detail stuff and you know, uh, and we'd hang out with the family and and they do this and that and my eyes kind of roll to the back of my head. Okay. How about stories about what happened to during their day? Do you hear those kind of stories? No. Um, I feel like my father, uh, he's, he, he'll recount his day, but my mom, the way she tells stories, it's always way, way back. Hmm. Childhood, like nostalgia stuff. <clears throat> Interesting. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, and can you tell me about your your sleeping habits? How many hours of sleep you think you need a night? How many you get a night? Whether it's difficult to fall asleep, etc. Yeah. Uh, let me start with the last one. It's not difficult at all to fall asleep. Uh, I don't know if it's because I'm so tired at the end of the day, but I doubt it. I just, ever since I was a kid, just fall asleep pretty much within a few minutes. Uh, I tend to, if I had it my way, I would stay up pretty late, maybe till one or two, but to try to adapt to, you know, the people I work with, uh, I try to get in bed by 11. It doesn't always happen, sometimes midnight. And then I will sleep in, I typically need I think I need a little more sleep than most people, maybe nine hours, eight, nine hours, and then I still feel sleepy. I just get up anyways, make a coffee, take Adderall. Oh, okay. Well, that's why you feel sleepy. Why is that? Well, because the Adderall means that during the time of day that you're up, you're, yeah. you're up more fully than you would otherwise be, which means you you use more energy than you otherwise would. So when you that do when you do sleep, you're extra tired. Okay, but this has only been for a couple of years. Before that, I was uh, 
Uh, you know, pretty much the same. Sleeping in. Okay. Uh, staying up late. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so, do you ever take naps? Uh, not really. I do like them, but I'm just like, I'll sleep at the end of the day. I'll just rack up being tired and then just crash at night. So, would you call yourself a natural stretcher or a willful stretcher? I've heard you ask that. Natural stretcher or willful stretcher? I don't stretch really. Okay. So, I, I guess, uh, but like, I, I find like workouts and, and, and ways to cure my back pain. I'll like YouTube it and then I'll do stretches. So, the answer is willful. Okay, that is in fact yeah. willful, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, cool. So, uh, let me, let me pop out a genealogy problem here because right. this is kind of a way of cross-referencing SI while also testing TI. So, uh, can you tell me who my father's wife's sister's son is in relationship to me? Father's wife's sister's son in relationship to you. That's your cousin. Okay. How about my father's mother's husband's only son's wife in relation to me? That's my mother, I think. That's my father's mother's husband's only son's wife, right? That's yeah. my mom. Yeah, right. Okay, cool. That's pretty uh that's pretty good functional usage of one component of SI. But uh you give you know We'll see what's going on here. You're giving me some sort yeah. of weirdly contradictory answers here on the SI front. Well, you know, like remembering my day? Dude, just never. I'm never able to do that. But this kind of genealogy stuff it, feels more natural. Okay, cool. Um, can you break down the task of of serving everybody bread into exactly four steps? Four steps, okay. Uh Serving everybody bread. At the table, okay. not in the yeah, world. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, like, what does that mean? No, but um, open the bread. Separate the bread into, like, whatever. Separate it up for the people who are at the table. Take the bread to the table and distribute the bread to the people. <laughs> okay, that's good. Some good tea either. <laughs> It sounds like you could be a professional bread giver. Yeah. <laughs> that would be easy, man. Okay, so when you do marketing kind of stuff, yeah. um, are, what are you... Is it sort of a campaign, like a social media campaign kind of a thing, or is it a, a, a concept for a brand or what? Okay, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's typically running ads, uh, and... The way I got started with that, I'm not going to go into some long thing, but I found a template that some marketers had spent millions of dollars on. They'd run it thousands of times. I'm like, okay, they know that works. So I'm just going to take that template and start running those ads for my father. Uh, he's helping people with like tax resolution from the IRS. So I got that to work. And to my surprise, like that worked. People started uh, calling him. It was actually profitable. I was like, Holy crap. Uh, let's just keep doing this. And so basically what I've been doing from then on is taking templates, try to like front load the work, make a template, and then uh, just duplicate that for a new client, try to adapt it to what they're doing and make it work for them. And so it's really me with my thoughts, with my ideas, making templates for people, trying to interact with them as little as possible I don't have to, I don't like going back and forth, having to like explain to them how I came up with all of this. I'm just like, it works. Let's just try to believe me. Mm -hmm. Let me uh, make this landing page for you. Basically I'm making landing pages, have them record a short video and do what I know and hopefully don't have to explain it to them a lot. Hmm. Interesting. Running ads and making landing pages, really. Hmm. Okay, cool. So, uh, what, 
what do you do? What kind of media do you consume when it's not useful at all? So nothing, when it doesn't provide you any information you want, it's just for yeah. entertainment. What kind of media do you consume? <clears throat> okay. And it's not useful. Yeah, I mean, I play a lot of games. I, I really like gaming. I think since I've been a kid, uh, that really pulled me in. What kind of games? First person shooters, resource distribution, <clears throat> what? Oh, interesting. Yeah, so in theory, I like anything that's, that, that's fun. But re in reality, if I don't have like a clear purpose in the game, I'm like, what do I do? Like, I'm just wasting my time, which I'm doing anyways, right? But I need like a, like Minecraft, right? It's like real wide open, no like mission or anything. That's very tough for me. I'm like, I have no ideas. Give me something. Uh, just point me in a direction. <coughs> Otherwise, I'm just going to keep uh, dancing around doing nothing. Uh, I like RPGs, right? Because there's like some sense of progression. Uh, I like the economy stuff uh, in RPGs. Uh, I'll tell you, the common thread between games I really like is the ability to quickly in the moment kind of make decisions. I feel like I have a one up on people in that situation. So like, for example, <clears throat> something like I've been playing Halo lately, you know, it's like real, real fast. And each, uh, each time I get into a situation, I feel like I can think on my feet real quickly, come up with something a little more clever than the other person and win. <clears throat> and then, uh, yeah. Oh, also, I want to say I like uh, real-time strategy and stuff like that, planning, like real uh, strategist mastermind stuff, but I kind of suck at it. I think I, I, I uh, it's hard for me to think all these steps ahead and, and uh, win that way. Like I can, I'll end up just testing a bunch of ideas. Like one match, I might test doing this strategy. I'll like uh, type in the chat, like, hey, look over here, you know, and then do something else and that won't work. So I'll test a new thing in the next match. I won't ever actually end up getting better at the big picture strategy at these things. So I kind of burn out after a while. I want something I can quickly think on my feet. Okay. Um... What about games like chess or checkers? You ever play those? Yeah, um, <clears throat> kind of. I, I, you know, it's more like my family members would be into it. I like it, but I'm like, it's it's the same thing every time. There's there's a bunch of people out there who are already better than me. I just like, I'm gonna get uh, so good, and then I'll just hit a brick wall. Uh, <clears throat> so not so much. I uh, wanted to like it, but. What about poker? Ever play poker? I love, I love some Hold'em. Okay. It's kind of like, um, kind of reminds me of those two worlds mixing, right? Where you have like a static set of rules, it just the same cards every time, but the ability to make decisions in the moment. I love that. And where, you know, your body language plays into it. I can try to read into people. I can try new things. It keeps me from getting, uh, I guess, bored with it. I love Hold'em. Do you play live live poker? I do. Uh, I mean, it's been a while, right, with COVID and yeah. stuff. But I have a Oculus, and like I base a, an Oculus uh, headset, you know, for VR, and <clears throat> my it's really a poker machine for me. I just use it to play poker, and one of my favorite things is I can dance around at the table and stuff and do stupid shit, and. Uh, just take people by surprise. I'll be like doing fake push-ups at the table, all annoying. But yeah, I just like that ability to be random and throw people off. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Um, okay, so <clears throat> tell me about your your plan for the self. Basically, give me give me some sense of where you were, where you came from, where you are, where you're going. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, I think my whole life I've been a little bit disorganized. I never had this like, oh, I want to be, when I was a kid, I was like, I, I don't know. How are these other kids knowing they want to be an astronaut or whatever? You're just a kid. I'm just a kid. How the hell am I supposed to know? So, 
when people like knew I want to run for office or whatever, like we're five years old. I was like, how do you know that? I don't know. And I feel like I'm never going to know. And then fast forward a couple decades. No, I still don't know. I, I still don't know. I know like I like certain things, but the kind of the doom of having like this nine to five job, I just always wanted to avoid that. So this kind of ties in like four years ago or so when I got into marketing, found something that worked. I was like, holy crap. I don't like I'm not bored to death by this. I can do my own thing. I can automate a ton of crap I don't want to focus on. And uh, I don't have to explain it to people all day. Uh, <clears throat> that was like, it's like a miracle for me. I'm like, damn, dude, I got to do this as long as I can because I have some sense of freedom this way. I can just, you know, get this working. Don't have to do the whole structured crap. So, so that's how I felt. Would you perceive my job as torture? No, I actually <laughs> think you got a great one, man. No, uh, but you, I got to explain things to people all day. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> and you know, I, I was like aware of myself. Like I said, don't want to explain things to people all day, a uh, third time or whatever. I'm like, I don't want to give off. That's not like a thing I think about. I don't know why I keep saying that. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. Well, I mean, I, I can tell you, I actually would say like I definitely don't want to explain things to people all day people email me stuff that I just tend to ignore a lot of emails because it's like I don't really want to hear your cognitive function story and I don't want to answer your cognitive function questions because I you know I don't enjoy explaining cognitive functions that much <laughs> Yeah, and to me, it seems like you've thought out a ton of crap. So if somebody comes with like a real base level question, it's like, well, I'll go back and learn the stuff, man, because. I mean, I don't mind when I'm when I'm in the mood to, to talk. I go and live stream and stuff. And I don't, if people ask basic questions, it's fine. I don't mind recapping the basics and stuff. But um, it's when people make objections without understanding the basics <laughs> that is annoying. They, they pull a Dunning-Kruger stuff on me. You know, that's kind of right. annoying. Well, that pisses me off a lot, too. In fact, I feel like that's my big trigger. But so You make music, apparently, yeah? Yeah, I, I do. It's been a while, right? But I have all this... It almost seems like peacocking. I, I bought that, like, months ago, and I haven't really played that keyboard. But it's, like, there... Because... When I come up with an idea, I don't want to have to be weighed down by trying to hook things up. No, no, like, I've got it set up. If I come up with an idea, feels good, I want to be able to record it right now, and because tomorrow I'm going to do the same thing. I, I didn't I didn't think it was peacocking because, I mean, I considered the possibility, but I, it, I immediately settled on, you're going to have it all set up in one place, like any sane person would. So right. it, it's like, what do you, you know, that's why you're standing here is because this is where your audio setup is. And if you're like right. me, you're basically slave to your audio setup because it's like I, I can make videos outside, right? But um, if I really want to do it properly it, it on the laptop, I'd have to take the audio setup outside with me and stuff. And it's a big pain exactly. in the ass. So then, then you switch over to the phone and you go, okay, well, it's a different kind of modality. But that's right. regardless, um, Real quick, just a quick interjection. I just want to clarify. I actually don't dislike explaining things to people at all. If it's the stuff that that I know about, like you, you know, you're 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 making these videos. You're just like flowing. You're telling people about, you know, you, you've you've thought this through. You're, you're you're telling people about it. And for me, that would be very easy. In fact, you asked me to talk about this stuff. It's very easy for me to give you answers. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But if it's, uh, yeah, if it's somebody being like, uh, if you don't agree with me, you are a racist. I'm like, I don't even know where to start with this. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, can you um, explain to me your concepts about justice? Justice. Yeah, um, <clears throat> kind of. So I feel like, uh, I guess it, it kind of hinges on truth, right? Because if there is no truth, well, then justice is just your opinion. So I feel like there's like an objective thing happening here, separate from whatever you and I want to be true or 
even what we think, you know, we've we, we, we've logic through what we think is true. I think there's something objective going on here. And we all have our, I mean, there's something objective going on here. We all have our views on it, but <clears throat> justice would be based on, um, <laughs> rabbit trailing here. Justice would be based on, um, you know, like evening out the balance, I guess. Uh, if, if, if um, somebody, uh, kills my family member, I guess justice would be killing their family member or whatever. Equity. That's something I think about a lot. Equity. Or, equality. or equality, you know. One of the two. Depending on how you think right. about it. Okay. Yeah, it, I think justice seems like a moral math problem kind of thing. Okay. Um, how are you feeling physically right now? Do you have any aches and pains? Any uh, crick in the neck or uh, headache or anything like that? <clears throat> no, I, I feel pretty good. Uh, Are you standing up? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do, is that I because? Think like that. Oh, okay. So, do you spend some time of your time standing because you spend too much of your time sitting? Because I do that, but or do you prefer yeah. to stand? Well, both. I think so. I did have back pain, you know, and and that you know probably a year ago I switched to a standing desk instead of sitting all day. So it was kind of <clears throat> looking ahead, like, where's this going? My back's getting worse. I need to implement some habits so I can slow this down or improve my situation. Okay. Uh, and so I, does your back yeah. feel better now? Yeah. Uh, that with a couple other things, like a couple exercises to strengthen the back, stretch the front, has been enough to kind of stop that... Uh, progression of whatever pain I was starting to get. Do you remember instances of that pain that prompted you to draw those conclusions about your back? Nah, more like I I recall a general pattern. Like, you know, I'd be doing whatever and then like I bend over and ah, there's like this hot feeling in my back. I'm like, God oh, damn it, that's happening more frequently than it used to. Uh, but not specific instances. Okay, so that's happening less now, so I feel good. All right, cool. Um, so when, when you experienced that, did you Google the question to see what to do? Yeah, I think that's almost what I always do. Okay. I go into research mode. I'm like, I don't know what to do. Let's, figure, let's find somebody who's spent their life working on this. Just take their best thoughts. Okay, cool. So what gives you, uh, can you point to some events or moments that have given you particular satisfaction? I mean, if I, you know, I'd have to work to, I'd have to work to find those. I could. All right. If you were going to describe yourself as somebody yeah. who takes particular satisfaction in Mia, well, oh. what would you put into Mia? Well, I feel like. I can come up with some random stuff you've never heard before in the moment. And I like making people laugh. Uh, I think, you know, just uh, maybe moments hanging out with friends, having a beer, uh, just, you know, uh, connecting over like concepts on stuff like uh, <clears throat> making people laugh, uh, you know, taking people by surprise a little bit. But see, that's all general. It's like, I don't know a specific moment. I just think about that feeling when that happens. I'm like, yeah, that's, I, f I connect with that. It's easy for me just to kind of be live here in the moment with you and come up with some random stuff based on what you're giving me. <clears throat> okay. Um, what, do you, can you tell me some possible reasons why a person might move to Kansas and become a wheat farmer? Yeah. They hate the sea. Kansas. Wheat farmer. Yeah. Uh, they love wheat. Who doesn't? Yeah. <laughs> Flat land. You can farm. Yeah, who doesn't, right? Wheat. So good. Just kidding. Uh, a bunch of flat land. It's easier to plow or whatever. Uh, they love wheat. Oh, it's in the middle of the country so they can distribute evenly uh, not have to like shipping charges way across the country uh they love kansas like the women there are their type mm -hmm. <laughs> sure and what kind of woman do you think is representative of kansas 
Uh, farmer? Uh, um, what kind of woman? I don't know. Would you say it's, it's, it's more um, tomboy or girl next door? Give me oh, okay. an archetype well, for this girl. Well, now that you've fed me two archetypes, I'll go with tomboy. That's just like my instant kind of impression. Okay. Girl next door, though. The tomboy next door. That's what I would say. Okay. And um, uh, what, what state do you associate with shy and fussy girl? Shy and fussy girl. Shy. Shy. Shy and fussy girl. Ah. I don't think about the states too much and the people in them. Shy and fussy, okay. Not New York. That's not, just fussy not and New not York. Shy. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> shy. You're gonna have to I guess a more southern state. Georgia, but fussy. Let's see. Somewhere around there, but not Georgia. I I'm thinking Virginia. Okay. Right. Fussy for sure. It's for lovers, but that makes everybody shy and fussy. Okay. Um, okay. So, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a long sentence and ask you to compact it into a short sentence. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you don't want to be bothered by a, a persistent problem related to the avian foul in the area, which is to say if you don't want to have to trouble with a, yeah, a bunch of peacocks coming to your backyard to bother you every day, yeah. then you should not begin at any point to feed them food when they come around or else they just keep coming around over and over again and asking for food and honking when they don't get it. Okay. That was tough, but if you're pissed off by the birds uh, in your area, don't feed them. Good. That's excellent consolidation. Thank you. Um, okay. So, uh, let me ask you about com task completion. Um, are you, do you think it's, okay, let me ask it this way. Which value is more important, do you think, for you to uphold? Uh, following through on what you say you're going to do or being kind? Damn. Uh, that's a tough one. What was the question about those two values? Which one's more important? Uh, which one do you think is more important for you to uphold? For me to uphold? I would, I guess it's tough, but I would say following through on what I say I'm going to do. Okay. And what about um, not forgetting something important or uh, not being rude, which is more important? Not forgetting something important, I think, because rudeness is a lot of times I'm just trying to say, I'm just trying to get out accurate. And people are like, that's rude. And I'm like, just listen to what I'm saying. So the first one. OK. Um, and what do you think you're more reliable in upholding if I were to task you with doing this at work or something, if you had a regular job that were, you had to do stuff, would you be more expected, more reliably expected to, um, fix small problems around the building? Like, um, like a leaky faucet or a wriggly toilet handle or something? Um, or would you be more reliably expected to deal with complaining customers and calm them down? Oh, man. The first one for sure. Okay. Yeah, uh, I find the, you, people's emotional states hard to try to reason with. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> if somebody gets mad at you without good cause, are you likely to get mad back or are you likely to try to just walk away or are you likely to just sort of go, okay, okay, whatever, you can have what you want? Somebody's mad at me and they... Without good cause. Yeah, without good cause. You know, I think my natural state is to want to 
be like, no, no, like, let me explain. Like, I think maybe there's a misunderstanding. But I've done this enough to where I realize if somebody's just set and they have a certain view of you, it's just, they're just going to end up uh, being more entrenched in whatever they're thinking. Um, again, what was the question about this? <laughs> it was... Uh... What makes me more upset? Uh... I don't remember either. I started thinking yeah, about good. my next that's, question. That's funny. Um, it was a TE question. So it was, oh, right. The, it was the toilet handle or the customer's thing. The toilet handle, for sure. Okay. So the other people's emotions make you feel uh, like at a loss of how to deal with them because trying to reason with them doesn't necessarily work. Yeah, but I do feel responsible for it. And I, 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 I spend I, probably too much time trying to let's talk about what do you mean by x here's what i mean by x so we let's get our terms the same and then try to clarify it uh <clears throat> i think the older i get the less i do that but that seems more automatic try to reason okay person how do you feel emotionally right now pretty good uh I don't think about that much. I feel good. I was nervous. I was more nervous, like, before the call. Okay. I wish I could just, like, just let it happen, just show up, whatever. But now I tend to think about things coming in. Sure. Right now I feel pretty good. Less stressed out. Okay. How do you think I feel emotionally right now? Uh, maybe a little interested. Uh, pretty much, you, you seem pretty even keeled to me. It's always kind of this... Pretty good, kind of amused, maybe. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I do find these things, uh, generally, most of the time, I find them pretty enjoyable to do. It's like, it's yeah. not, it's it's work, but it's fun work. And I, you know, I get to talk to an endless series of different people, which is, which is kind of cool. Yeah, you're sharpening the blade all the time. I, I think it's a great... Great job. If I knew what I was talking about, I might want to do something like that. Mm. Okay, cool. <laughs> well, um... <clears throat> By the way, I've been into MBTI for like 20 years. Still can't type myself. The more I know, the less I know about myself. Okay. Can't figure it out. Have, uh... Have you ever heard the... Have you ever heard me ask the troll question? What's that? Have you ever heard me ask the troll question? No, I don't think so. Okay, so it's a kind of a story question where you're gonna. It's like a role-playing game question. You're, uh, you're the mayor of a town. It's the Middle Ages. Your town is split in two by a river. On the okay. west side of the river, you got your farms, your grain silos, livestock, stuff like that. On the east side of the river, you got your townspeople, your craftsmen, your merchants, and yourself. Uh, most of the people are on the east side of the river now. Uh, right before winter, right before the first winter storm that brings a bunch of snow, uh, your your bridge washes away, and a river troll comes to take up residence in your river. <clears throat> okay. Now, the river troll, it has a magical power, which is it can run up to any food crossing the river on a boat, and it can steal 10% of it or take 10% of it away. And, uh, and On a boat? On, and it, it can run up to any food that's crossing the river on a boat, okay, and steal, yep. take 10% of it away. Whether one crust of bread or a whole dead cow, it can take 10% of it away. And you can't do anything to stop him from doing that. Now, the thing is, you have just enough food saved up for winter that if you let this continue all winter, if you're transporting the food over on boats now instead of the bridge, then you will you will have 10% of your people starve. So you need this, this to stop in some way or deal with it in some way and so the people say what are we going to do mayor so what are you going to do um <clears throat> by food i mean it's the middle ages eat. okay but like if i take a shit in the boat will he eat 10 percent of that if you take a ship in the boat a shit if i take a dump no he only takes 10 percent of food he has a magical okay. power that allows him to distinguish between Food and not food. Okay. So I'm thinking right away, uh, let some of the, the most rank food go bad. 
put that on the ship. And he's going to take 10% of that, and he's going to get real, real sick. And I have to go take a nap. Okay, well, you, you try this notion. He, he takes 10% of whatever's not rancid, but he, oh, does, okay. he doesn't get sick. Okay. Dang, man. Okay. And he's only taking food on the boat? I mean, because I feel like we could swim some food across. Put on the back, you know, carry a, a backpacks. You know, but no way. I gotta stop you. I have okay. never. I actually have never heard anybody suggest that before. I've never heard of me either. Um, and that is really, really remarkable when I say that I've never heard anybody suggest that before, because. Um, I've heard, I've asked this question a million times to so many different people in so many different contexts. I've, I've heard so many different answers to it. Um, and I've never heard anybody suggest that. And it's a, this is the first time in a long time that I've encountered an answer that makes me go, I don't know what happens with that answer. Yeah. In other words, I don't, I haven't already gone through this, uh, this line of reasoning, but the thing is, it makes perfectly good sense that based on what I said at the beginning, Swimming food across would work. Of course, um, and it's probably a better solution than the most, what I've considered heretofore the most intuitive solution, which is move the people, not the food. Oh, yeah. That is, but it actually, that would have been. But yeah. actually, swimming it across is a better idea because you delegate the work of transport to a few people who are already in the job of transport, presumably. Right. In fact, you don't even need to swim it across. You can have a line crossing the water and get across like that. Right. So, so, and you don't have to move from your house, man. Right. Swim that food back home. You don't have to build a new house. Well, I mean, the point is you you would, you still, it would just be like the same as before, except instead of a boat carrying it across, the guys who were rowing the boats across would right. instead be just doing this, this very, very in cold. It would, I mean, they'd probably freeze to death, actually, yeah. <laughs> getting across this. Gotta break a few eggs. Eh, yeah, all right. No, uh, I'm just kidding. But, um, yeah. Okay, interesting. Really, yeah. really interesting response. Not one I've no, heard as before. As soon as you said in the boat, I'm thinking this is a stupid troll, though, you know, because he can't, there's people swimming with food. If it's conditional on the boat, I'm like, all right, we got this guy. You know, just don't take that damn boat. Well, if you can get some Middle Ages <laughs> neoprene going, put him in a wetsuit, maybe this would work. Uh, okay, cool. Well, that's interesting. So, um, let me ask you some more TI questions. Uh, let me do some of the uh, syllogistic ones. I haven't done any of those yet. <clears throat> All right. So, if only penguins eat crackers, and some things that eat crackers, like cheese... Is it necessarily the case that some penguins like cheese? Okay. Only penguins eat crackers. Mm -hmm. Some things, for penguins, obviously, right? Some things that eat crackers like cheese. Mm -hmm. Is that the question? Yeah. Yeah. And the third? So is it necessarily the case that some penguins like cheese? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Okay. If uh, some bananas are yellow and only yellow things have ribbons, is it necessarily the case that some bananas have ribbons? Some bananas are yellow. Only yellow things have ribbons. Is it necessarily the case that some bananas have ribbons? Keeping track of all that is tough. Okay. <clears throat> some bananas are yellow. Only yellow things have ribbons. Is it necessarily the case that some bananas have ribbons? All right. Okay, so when you say only yellow things have ribbons, that doesn't, that doesn't matter about bananas. Some bananas are yellow. Only yellow things have ribbons. Nah, yeah, you don't have to have some bananas. It could be other yellow things with ribbons. Okay. Yeah. So I... I am very confident about what type you are, and I suspect 
I'm much less confident about this suspicion, but I am I suspect that you don't think you're this type. So I'm would... very confident that you're an ENFJ. Interesting. I did not think I was that type. Okay. What type do you think you were coming in? Dude, coming in, I was the less the least confident I've ever been because I don't want to bias the results with my own feelings about it. But uh, I test as, when I was younger, test as ENFP a lot. And I thought, this doesn't look like me, all these stereotypes of this. Uh, and I said, it's got to be something, some reason I'm answering. I want people to think of me a certain way, so I'm, I'm screwing it up. ENFJ, you said. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. I look at that type. <clears throat> and... Um, Honestly, it's my least favorite, which should be a, a, a kind of indicator, right? Like this kind of feels bad when people talk about the weaknesses of this. It's like hitting home, I guess. What, what weaknesses do you think people identify in ENFJ? I would guess um, like overly um, kind of like projecting maybe their morals on people uh, without thinking it through. That's kind of my impression. <laughs> ENFJ, right? <laughs> the fact that you're so right about it kind of confirms yeah. that you're an ENFJ. That, I, you know, it's like, I, I didn't have any clarity about what you could be talking about, really. But, because I, I guess I don't, I'm just in I ignoring, you know. But, um, but yeah, now, now that you say that, okay, yeah, okay. That, that is a common sort of projection of ENFJ and I can see why you wouldn't like that yeah I don't like that I, I don't want to be that way but you know it is what it is I mean the thing uh, is just because people commonly describe a type as something is not a reason to internalize it so for sure especially if it's sort of a character thing like that cognitive functions determine how we interface attentionally with the world they don't true. determine our character at all or our worth so it's like everybody no matter what their stack has equal character and worth or equal opportunity employers is this fe that you're doing right here it's kind of fi i i care i actually care like um it makes me emotional to uh to to see that something that should be relieving people of these kind of like normative burdens which is to say you're, you're not good enough in some way or another that, yeah. that uh, a system that should be relieving that somehow causes it to you know in some in some instances more than others and it's uh i guess at this point i actually care oh i i feel that i will say that immediately it, so a problem I, I typically have is trying to figure out things you know what i mean i'm like trying to i feel like i can never quite get the grasp on it you know like this mbti thing over time or like uh, working with another marketer like a coach and i'm like they said this one thing I got to square this away, and I, I feel like I do struggle with that. Well, I mean, I think that has to do with NI as a tool function, which is to say it's your operational value. You expect everything to conform to this notion of single most relevant factor. You expect everything to collapse and distill down. Or it would be nice, the, the universe would be nice if it would present that to you. And what you do when it doesn't allow you that is you go to your extroverted intuition. It's when neither of those things work that you feel really self-critical and you'll typically blame your lack of extroverted intuition rather than your lack of introverted intuition which you assume was good enough but the situation didn't allow it to collapse something down so Damn. so what you just said i because you know you talk about like um you said a couple words operational and tool stuff like that okay um i can explain I, that better if you want yeah sure i mean you're gonna get me a recording of this right because i'd like to pour over what you said yeah sure um the tool function is just the first instrumental value and the defining instrumentality of the self, which is to say, it's the thing you do to accomplish other things with, attentionally. So for you, that's NI. NI could be described as distillation to the single most relevant factor, or articulation, isolation of the single most relevant factor, or... or collapsing down to from a lot of words to a few words collapsing down from broad expression into singular easy to 
encapsulate expression, and that links in part to your bad SI. So because you don't remember long strings of words, you don't operate in that currency. That's funny. I mean, I knew you were going to be able to pick that up. Like when you give me long things, I'm like, wait, what? Where did we start? I'm like <laughs> trying to figure this out and then that's gone, you know? Yeah. I, I, I've often explained it like a spotlight. Like if, if I'm like looking at a concept or an idea, I feel like I can see this right now. But as soon as I move on to something else, I'm like, wait, what? You know, it's like only one thing at a time. Right. <laughs> well, um, I mean, the thing is, your, your stack, like mine, goes communicative, communicative, communicative. Oh, I'm sorry, yours goes communicative, communicative, and the first two functions, just like mine, we're the meta-analyst type, so to speak. So yours, you have a third slot function of, of non-communicative physicality, but it's the it's the experiential part not the not the archival part so um it's like you do have satisfaction plenty of occasions but you don't remember any of them <laughs> yeah like it's like i know it when i see it type thing right and like i know when i'm in it and you kind of don't understand the point of why you would remember stuff like that anyway what are you going to do try to relive it why not have a new experience yeah yeah and so you see me, I'm not quite understanding, but obviously I know you do this, you're, you know, you're on another level. So it's like just trying to square that away, <clears throat> trying to understand that, that'll take some time. Okay, do you have any questions? We have time left. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> so many. See, as you're saying, ev everything you're saying, I, I come up with like three different possibilities of what you're saying, and I don't want to interrupt you. So I'm like, let's just put that aside. This is a recording. I can go back and have those questions again later. But <clears throat> so much. The, the funny thing is you're making me self-conscious about my lack of concision. <laughs> uh, but but again, if I'm TI on the bottom, right? Yeah. That is, uh, fourth. That, yeah. It's, I mean, fourth, right? So it's not completely your fault. It's, it's still, I can't figure things out, right? <laughs> no, it's not. It's not that. It's the SI, and you and you keep mistaking yeah. SI for something else, which is another sure sign that it's polar. Um, right. The reason I want to be concise is because ultimately you're using NI to yeah. understand me, which means you're not parsing things out. You're trying to get the gist of what I'm saying. Now that that. And that's fine. I understand that. So I'm trying to be more concise to make it easier for you to get the gist of what I'm saying. That's really good. And that all makes sense. Although I could not repeat it to you right now. Right. It's so new, you know, but that rings true. And you just, um, so it's F-E-N-I-S-E-T-I. -E -E is that what that is? Yeah. That makes a lot of sense because I see me trying to put the big picture together a lot trying to figure out how does it all fit together um and a lot of physical things like i like to learn like i like doing the dishes because every single time i get better at it it's like refining a process i love that like a nice physical process and now i'm just like rinsing things off throwing them in the dishwasher putting a pot in there later you know set it i love um i don't know you know that's, that's, that task, that that's task doing, task completion, SE stuff. That's SE third slot. So SE third slot means it's your scorecard. You feel like you're really you're really scoring points when you're SE, whether it's getting work yep. stuff done or getting a musical idea done or getting the dishes done. Uh, it's It feels satisfying to you. It's like it does putting the handle on shit, you know? Yep. I used to occasionally feel like that. <laughs> and then I, you just acquiesced or what? Well, my, it's like, I, I feel like I used to have a better relationship with SE than I do now. Like, <laughs> I remember, I, I guess I still do occasionally have this. It's just, it doesn't feel quite the same, but I, I used to have these bursts of energy where after, you know, a couple months of slacking, I'd have a few days of like, put the handle on shit and it would feel really satisfying. It's like, now it's just, it's just another, I'm just too familiar with this cycle to get to be satisfied when I do. It's just like putting out the inevitable next time I have to do it. <laughs> For sure. And it seems like you kind of just, you understand 
your type, right? So it's like, I've heard you say this sound clip like something like, why are you trying to get good at your last or your fourth function? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Like you're not gonna get that much better at it. Yeah. What are you doing? Well, anyhow, um, so the other thing I would say is your good TE, you'll note is in service of and driven by your good FE ultimately, which is you're figuring out how to interface with people so that they buy things. Yeah, absolutely. What works most often? I'm right. thinking about that. Yeah, and that's that's as big picture as you can get, as universalist as you can get. It's perfect work for you, F E N I. It's it's understands that every everything you're presenting is foremost if you're presenting it for public consumption, it's some sort of social interface that needs to attain the results that you want to attain on a universal level. So ENFJs in that regard have this magical ability to um, separate the the large scale social impacts from the specific. So unlike ESFJ, who can't get past it if Judy's not not happy, ENFJ can understand what makes the vast majority happy and not be swayed by the individual instances of where it doesn't as much. There's still FE doms, but that's probably why you don't really like interacting a whole bunch because then you feel moved by their various yep. meows. Yeah, you got that right. Uh, I really like people, but it drains me. Like, I love people. It's just draining work for me trying to communicate with them. Well, have you seen my recent short video called INFJ Male Most Realistic Nightmare? You'll share that kind of nightmare as an ENFJ as well. It's eight okay, second long. That. It's eight seconds long. Oh yeah, I think I did see it yesterday. It's like all these people like, please, sir, let me uh, give let, me your opinion. Yeah, like he hear me out. Let me tell you my woes. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Oh man, so many little things that spring up and then I lose them. I'd love to bring them up, but that's that's great. So I guess on TI, did I? Uh, how did I do there? You did did well. I get a bunch of stuff wrong? Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no you got it's things more right. More the polar SI, right? Yeah, I mean the thing is, as I've noted in the past in ENFJs, they actually typically will test as well or even sometimes better than INFJs. Um, the the reason I think is because uh, your dominant function is on that axis, and uh, you you've you've watched some of these videos before. You understood what kind of, what kind of thing was coming, and also it's like the way that you the way that you talked yourself through the the syllogism questions suggested to me that you kept trying to shift frame to a TI frame. And then back to an NI frame. And it's, you know, it's like rather than just doing it straight up TI. Like at the end, you wanted an NI conclusion that says this is the answer for reasons that don't need to be explained. <laughs> yeah, yes. while, while the process was explaining to you what that answer should be. And then what, as, soon as, you, as soon as you figured out what the answer should be, you sort of let go of the, the process and the reasoning behind it and just had the answer. And you no longer needed to retain how it was that you came by exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that's very good. That's, that's right on. So many things, Eric, but that is, that is great. A lot, it's a lot to process. Uh, you know, and I, I find myself, I'm never going to figure a lot of these things out. Uh, but uh, I guess one more question. You said good TE, right? And I think this is just a lack of understanding the kind of eight functions. You know, I, I just found out about you a few weeks ago from uh, that guy, Gandhi. He had done, I think, a video with you. Do you know who I'm talking about, Gandhi? He thinks he's an INTJ. I'm not sure what he really is. Anyways, I, I, I was the one who typed him. But he goes, this guy is great. He's my favorite typing guy. I was like, okay, I'll look into it. Well, thanks, never, Gandhi. Yeah. yeah. That's much more useful than a hunger strike. Um, exactly. So, what was the question again? I don't know. You're asking me something. I know. Oh, about the good TE. But oh, right, right. Here's the thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
I, it's, I have something that seems more important now. Oh, is that all right? We just move on. I'll learn about the good TE later. Sure. Okay. You had this video I watched yesterday. It's very frustrating for me. You said, can this guy be saved? You know who I'm talking about? That guy who just, he's an ENFJ, isn't he? No, he's an Son ENFP. Of a bitch. Oh, ENFP. All right. So I just hate when people are like, because you hit me with solid TI, you're performing a hate crime on me. And it's like, no, it doesn't check out. Tell me how you came to that conclusion. You know, um, I just. Well, you, here's the thing I've concluded about it is I played that wrong. OK, so in other okay. words, I should have played it and I probably still will play it like this eventually, which is, you know what? I'm wrong just as because the reality is I don't disagree with any I don't, I don't behave as though I disagree with him at all. I act like he says one should act in a relationship, basically. I'm not judging or, or, or if, if she says something that doesn't make any TI sense, I don't correct her or anything, you know? She's got her headphones on right now, so I don't think she can hear any of this. But, uh, <laughs> um, uh, so I, it's like I don't, I don't behave like, like he's always accusing narcissists of behaving in my intimate relationships, but I do behave more like that in my public discourse. And so it's like, I need to remember, he's not talking to people about how they behave in their public discourse. He's talking to them yeah. about how they behave in their intimate relationships. And maybe this is an example of where I'm being stupid and in interjecting my TI frame of reference. And therefore I can justify excluding them from political discourse. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> See, that makes it that makes it fair that way. So I think wow. I might I might use this as as a way to justify that that other side of it. Sure. Is that Machiavellian or something? I don't know. <laughs> a little bit, but I think it's useful. Um, you know, I and I think the thing that really just irritates me is if uh, it's when he says something like. This person is making me, uh, like, or they are, uh, I forgot the word he uses, but basically, like, you're intimidating me, you are, these things that are conditional subjectively based on the person, like, I'm offended by that, so you offended me. That type of thing, I have no patience for that. You offended me. It's like you control that in your head. I mean, um, you probably consider it overusing FI. Because it's an ENFP projecting his frame bias onto the world and saying, I'm, you, you, like me, must use your feelings to determine the legitimacy of things. And so if something makes you feel bad, don't put up with it. There is something wrong with what's going on. Um, and sure. it's kind of understandable that he's, he's saying that because most of the time, feelings gets kicked around by thinking. Yes. So, it, but it's, it's still... He's still doing that thing. He's still projecting his frame bias without any kind of meta awareness that would help him put it into context and prevent people from misunderstanding and misusing it. He's guilty of the things I'm accusing him of. Yes. But at the same time, I'm sort of missing the, the main frame, which is this is supposed to be about interpersonal intimate relationships, not about public discourse. He needs to right. sort of clarify that as well. But, you know. Right. Yeah, the context changes it. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> well, that was great, Eric. Thank you. No problem. My pleasure. So I will share this with you privately uh, as soon as we're going to stop a bit right now. And I'm stopping right now.